everyone, this is Marcy. I want to welcome you to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. If you're returning, welcome back. Last time we were together, you may remember, my daughter was in the studio with me and we were picking out cookbooks and papers so I can make her a heritage cookbook with family recipes in it. What I want to do today is try to make some recipe cards and different things to fit into the pockets in here. Go ahead and get yourself a snack, a drink, and a comfy place to sit, and then we'll get started right after this. Here's the cookbook that we chose last week or last time. I need to stop saying last week because at some point I'm going to want to film more than one a week and have more uploads per week. So last episode, <laughs> that's what we were doing. Now I thought I would have this done for her by now and I wanted to give it to her. Ooh, there's that retro kitchen I was looking for. I wanted to give it to her when we were at the beach. Uh, for my birthday in August, but that didn't happen. So we're working on it now. Ooh, there's more of that spam. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, personally, I like spam, so I don't think that's the worst thing in the world, but I realize there are a lot of people who don't like that. These we're going to be cutting apart today. These were Some of these were from this stack, the Authentique Saucy, and then some of them were from this Home Sweet Home pack. Oops, these guys got stuck together. So we're going to be using these and cutting these up today, and then we're going to layer them onto uh, these alphabet cards or index cards, and then maybe backing some of them with, with plain index cards, either coffee dyed or these colored. And then we may take some stickers from these packs and, uh, and sticker them up or maybe add some fabrics or something. I'm going to need to trim them down some to make sure that they fit in these, oh, what do you call them? The photo sleeves. And then I had the other kind that I showed in last week's video as well. Now these papers here, I had written myself some notes about what I wanted to do. So these have not been trimmed down yet or added to the cookbook. I still need to go through and take out pages and things, but I'm not gonna focus on that today. But I will need to trim these down and make pages. I don't know if I'll get to that in the next video or a couple of videos down the road, but we will get to that. I'm excited to dive into this one. This, uh, these are just pages that I asked her to go through some of the other cookbooks that I had set aside and pull out her favorites. So she's not really picking them up so much for She's not really picking them out so much for the recipes, although some of them, like maybe this one, the homemade candies, but some of them she's picking out for the images. And then some of these as well have charts and guides for cooking, cooking tips. Uh, she liked this one. She really liked this retro image here. So that was fun. Poultry and stuffing. So really fun pictures on that. And then this came out of the one that was a church cookbook with the little black cover on it. So there's some guides here. So we'll be adding those to the cookbook. And this one, the same thing. This came out of another slightly less old version of the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. And this has suggestions for meals for the different holidays or for picnics and events so that's really fun they are they're still helpful i think they're still very useful so those will be extra pages that get added in and then here i went through some of my recipes and i will be typing them up or handwriting them for her from friends and family this one my mother-in-law the very first time I ever went over 
to their house and it, Tom and I weren't even dating yet but I was there and we were doing something and she made these and I had honestly never had these and I don't understand why because these are a staple in the American American family life <laughs> but they're the ones with the condensed milk and coconut and things so I had written it down but then I found the same recipe in that church cookbook so what I may do is cut it out where is it it's in here I may just cut it out and put it on one of these papers and back it but I will just reference that it is grandma's recipe and I thought I would add some little notes about where some of the recipes came from like this popcorn cake my mom used to make this for us when we were in college it's like a giant popcorn ball but you form it in an angel food cake pan and then you add all these candies and things and then she would send it to us when we were away at college and then we would share with all of our friends so that's a fun one I haven't made this for a really long time but that's a fun one my best friend in Seattle this is her almond roca recipe and I can never get it to work for me but she's she makes the best almond roca from that recipe my sister-in-law's biscotti um, our cousins oatmeal caramelitas that are to die for I used to take these to our scrapbook nights when we'd all get together once a month, my friends and I. And one of my friends called it Death by Butter. <laughs> They're very good. <laughs> this one was uh, Tom's Aunt Mabel, uh, one of her recipes that we liked a lot. And then this one here, again, from a slightly less old Better Homes and Gardens cookbook has the gingerbread recipe that I make all the time but it's my mom's recipe and it came out of her cookbook so one of these vintage cookbooks I have I just snagged the same recipe now the only difference is there was some little change I think between using shortening or butter between the different versions and I personally just use oil and it all turns out the same so and I don't use light molasses, I use dark. But anyway, this is that recipe, so I'm gonna insert that as a spare page. And then this one is a really good marinade that we like to make. It's got a bajillion ingredients, and my husband got it long ago from somebody he used to work with, and we we use it quite frequently. It's really good, so she just called it marinade, didn't have a name, so I have dubbed it awesome marinade. Anyway, these are all really good. And then in here also are, um, some of these she picked out just because she wanted the recipes, like pickles. This is our family recipe for hot chocolate mix. This is the one that we used to have at camp all the time. So here it is again from a different recipe book, so I'm not sure which one I'll use, but this is the one that every church camp and every retreat and every everything from grade school all the way through high school and even into college, there was always some nice mother that would mix this stuff up. And this was like the church standard <laughs> standard hot chocolate mix. It's not as super sweet and it's not as super chocolatey as some. It's really good. So my kids grew up on that. Here's my hamburger soup recipe. And we found it in that church cookbook. So I pulled that one out. Homemade ice cream. Gotta have that. Um, here they are. Here's the magic cookie bars. Oh, and Michelle. <laughs> this is how we discovered. <laughs> anyway, um... This is the one that my mother-in-law made. And then snickerdoodles. These are my husband's favorites. So we threw in a snickerdoodles recipe. This pizza is a liquid crust that you pour in. And my mom, this was how she made pizza for us growing up. I don't know. I'm, I'm going down memory lane here. You guys are probably bored stiff. So fast forward. <laughs> Beef stew. I make stew a lot. And this is a very good basic recipe for that. And then just some standard basic cake recipes that we all know of. The... Um, there's the Coke cake, the Wacky cake that has no eggs, the Dump cake. Those are classic every church uh, church picnic and church potluck or or a work potluck. You get one of those. And then just basic uh, butter, butter cookie recipes. So these are all going to go in to her book. And then I'll be writing notes to go with them so that she knows the significance. And then I've thought of a few more recipes I may go through and... Um, include as well that are in my recipe box. Now my mother-in-law passed away in 2011 and sadly through an unfortunate series of events we don't have a lot of her stuff and I'm most sad that I don't have her recipe boxes 
um, her cookbooks and her vintage hats, <laughs> probably that. And then she had this sweet set of blue dessert dishes that I just always loved. But anyway, we don't have any of that. So the few recipes of hers that I do have are ones that she gave me along the line, you know, throughout our married life. So I'm gonna go back through my box and see if any of those are ones that Katie would want. I don't have recipes from my mom in my mom's handwriting either, but um, I do have an old church cookbook that she bought when I was little, like I was like an infant. And so our church had made up, the ladies had put together a cookbook. And what I'm gonna do is go through that cookbook and find the recipes that she submitted and my aunt submitted. And some of them are ones that we make all the time and just photocopy it so it's in the typewritten font and then I'll just photocopy it and also back it on some of these recipe cards. I feel like all I'm doing is talking to you and not much action, so I'm sorry. Last thing are these recipe cards um, and cut aparts that were included in the different kits. So I'm gonna get down to it and cut out the ones we want. And through the magic of editing, I have now cut apart the papers and gotten everything situated. In one stack here, we have the recipes that were typed up from that church recipe book. And we are going to put those on this stack. In this stack, I have cut these so that they will fit inside these photo sleeves. And in the next video, we'll be decorating pages and turning those into a waterfall arrangement. But today I'll show you how I decorated those up. And then these, I'm just loading onto these few little tabbed index cards that I have. Now what I did while the camera was off was I went ahead and did myself an example for each one so I could figure out what it was exactly I wanted to do. And then I'll just demonstrate for you one of each. I would like to do two, but I think we're gonna run out of time. So let's start with this guy here. And I may need your advice, so uh, be prepared in the comments below to offer up an opinion because there's, I'm a little undecided. Ooh, I got all wrinkly back there. I, I'm a little undecided about adding some of these index cards to the backs, so we'll have to see. I think it may be too late, but I'm gonna see if I can smush that out a little more. Nope. This, this one, I glued the index card down and then I realized I wanted to put this fabric strip first and then I glued it back on, so I think, I think that made it pucker, but she probably won't care. If I was selling it, I would care, but I'm not selling it. I'm giving it away to my daughter. I did use this little fabric accent here because as you can see, right along the top, these don't quite line up. Now she's not a fan of distressing, but I may still go ahead and just ink that in a little bit so it doesn't show as well. And then I should have just lined everything up with the top of the card instead of with the bottom of the card like I did. So let's work on this one first. So everybody has a front and a back, and then I picked out the coordinating index card. Some of them in this stack, like this, already have a sentiment on the front, so it wouldn't be able to be written on. But then some of them, like this one, you could start writing on the front and then carry it over to the back. So that's, that's what we're gonna do here.
Now in this stack, these had to be cut a little bit different size. And I went back and forth on how I wanted to do this. But what I did was, here's the front, and then I just glued a recipe card to the back and added a sticker. Oh, we forgot to add the sticker to this one. Hold it. We're not done. Who said we were done? I'm not done. Throw that over there. Let's see, what do we want down here? Um, I'm gonna see who, who goes the best with this. This has a lot bigger, a lot bigger stickers. But I think, and that's mostly red. There's this one. I want something with some pink. Preferably with some pink. It says fresh. I assume those are eggs. They don't, I don't, they look like ice cubes. <laughs> I don't think they're meant to be ice cubes. But <laughs> oh, gee willikers. Here, let's do tea, flour, sugar. That's pretty. There we go. Okay, now we're done. Dunsies. Okay. Announcing that's that one done now, officially. So yeah, um, on some of these, in this stack, they are plain on the front, or they have, um, you know, this one has a word, a phrase on it sentiment. I think the rest of these are just the background images. So what we can do is find a sentiment that we like. And let's see again what we got. That will match. We've got home memories. I was thinking about getting out my labels and just putting a label on here so that she could see what the recipe card was for. And the other thought I had, which we might actually do, we might do that now. My other thought was that, since there's not a lot of room to write, and I don't know about you guys, but I need more than, more than one recipe card and, and the back isn't gonna be available. So I was thinking about making it like a flip down and then it would fold. This would be easier if I just used a um, a double-sized recipe card that already folded, but I don't have those, so, <laughs> so we're not going to do that.
Our third example, third style, are these with the typewritten typewritten recipe. Now what I'm debating on is whether or not I want to put this on the back because that's where I can add my notes about these recipes and put my little blurb and not all of these have a good writable space on the background back side. So I think maybe we will. Let's go ahead and do that real fast. Oh, hold on, hold on. We want to do this. Well, this is, I'll oh, see, he got stuck. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's jammed and it's going to take me a while to get to get it unjammed. But um, this is what I was saying. Sometimes if the paper's too thin, it gets stuck in there. And uh, it takes me a bit of time to get it out. Now this one, the paper, it has not ever done that to me. It's got a little bit different edge to it. My alternative. I just don't think it looks as cute as the other one. But maybe I'm just too sentimental. Too sentimental about my corner punches. That could be it. Not saying that is it, but that could be it. There we go. Whoop. That one doesn't want to punch very well. See? What am I doing? Okay, whatever. Whatever. Oh, you sit over there. Maybe I don't want to make cute corners. <laughs> It is going to take up a lot of time to do that. Okay, so we're going to put you on the back. Keep rolling. Okay, I definitely want to put the pin in this because I'm not using this glue. There we go, okay. Not using the glue on that. So what I did on this one, because a lot of these have the names of people we don't know <laughs> down here, I got out some Rick Racks and things and I just covered it up with Rick Rack and put the sticker and I forgot I was putting the sticker so I put the lady too, but I think she's cute. She's from that Simplicity ribbon. I just have a little snippet here. So. I just cut her off the edge and I thought they'd be kind of cute to add a little vintage element if I want. So that's that one. So here we're going to take the next one in line is snickerdoodles and I'm going to put it on this one that has all the baking jars with brown sugar, baking soda and all that. And we're going to put it there. So what I used on this Hailing back, hearkening back to my scrapbooking days. I don't even know. Can you still get these? Because I haven't tried to look for these for a while. And one of these, yeah, this one I found at the thrift store. <laughs> 69 cents. And they were $3.50. So these are adhesive mounting squares. Initially repositionable, which is uber helpful. And I used, I used to go through gallons of these. <laughs> boxes and boxes of them. For a short time... I could buy them at Walmart in a pretty good sized pack for like $5, but I haven't seen that there for a number of years. So, anyway, the reason I am using this is because this is very thin paper, and I think if I use a wet glue, it's gonna mess up the paper too much. And then for the center, I am using a glue stick to stick the center down, but it will stay it will stay in place with these, with these photo mounts. <laughs> I'm gonna 
stick that right there. Sorry, Peggy Vanderord. She was an enthusiastic contributor to that cookbook. <laughs> she has lots of recipes in it. There we go. And that is that card. And then on the back, Whoops, I almost forgot to show you the most important part of these. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I I did some edging here with my pen. Now I like the look of sewing and I had debated about sewing around these, but I didn't want to mess with that and then trying to write on the backs and stuff. So this is an old trick from my scrapbooking days. And let me just say, I don't try to make it straight because I like how it looks when it's not super straight. It looks a little more homespun. And I just am going around these particular ones. I'm going around these and on um, these typewritten ones just to give it a little bit of border or edge. So it kind of looks like it's sewn, but it's not. That was probably not my best, <laughs> my best line drawing, but it's okay. It's okay, she won't mind. Okay, so there are our three examples. Three ways of doing our cards to go in the Heritage scrapbook. Heritage, sorry, to go in the Heritage recipe binder. So yeah, there we go. I like this, I like this with the paper clip on it. As you know, paper clips are an integral part of anybody's recipe box. There's always a paper clip or two. I like that from the side better. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you were able to get a few ideas if you decide to do something like this for yourself or maybe as a gift for family or something. Maybe you can do a few similar to this or show me, tell me down in the comments below what it is that you think would make a good addition or what you've done in the past. That would be great. Before we close, let me just do my quick reminder that if you found value in this content, to give me a thumbs up. And um, if you want to make sure that you don't miss my content and are alerted every time that I upload something, hit the notification bell. If you're continuing to watch me and you're liking, go ahead and show your support by becoming a subscriber and hit the subscribe button down below. That way you guys don't miss anything. I upload at this time, I upload once a week on Wednesday mornings. Yeah, just let me know that you're out there. Leave me comments down below. If you have any questions too, or anything, just leave them down below because I love hearing from you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then we'll be back with our inspirational thought for the day. Today, I'm gonna close with a verse or a couple of verses from Matthew 6 about the subject of worry. This has been going through my mind lately and I have learned that when you have a verse on your mind, that usually that's a little God nudge telling you to share it because somebody needs to hear it, or perhaps I need to hear it for myself. So today I'm gonna to be reading from Matthew 6, verses 25 through 27. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And there's more about not worrying about what you wear and how God takes care of you. But those verses have been going through my head. For a few days now and I have learned that 
when that happens, then God is really wanting you to share them. I also thought them fitting since we were doing a cookbook. Maybe that's why, just the theme of food. And of course, we're living in uncertain times, but people have lived in uncertain times for centuries, millennia. And yet God's truth is enduring. It never changes. It's always true. So as you go out this week, I just want you to keep that in mind, that he's taking care of you. He's caring for your food, for your clothes, for your needs, and just ask. Just remember to ask and to trust. So that's our inspirational thought for this week. And until next week, be inspired and do something creative today. Catch you in the next video.